Hi everyone, this is Mike Gorham. Welcome back to Perfect Playthrough. Our objective is to accomplish everything this game has to offer. And welcome to the finale of Castlevania Month. Let's take a look. Oh, that sounds good. Better than the Super Nintendo version. The ancestors of the Belmont family are doomed to confront the power of evil incarnate, Dracula. In 1917, a countess sought to revive the long-dead spirit of the vampire. Her name was Elizabeth Bartley. To revive him, she needed to travel all over Europe, enlisting help from all the powers of darkness. Two, two young vampire hunters set out to fulfill their destiny push back the evil hordes, and drive the vampire back into his dark netherworld. And yep, here we are. I may have saved the best for last. Uh, up, down, up, down, left, left, right, right, eight, B, A, start. That's the Konami code. And that unlocks expert mode. Normally, uh, and you press press start just to exit out. And we have two campaigns, John Morris, Eric Lacard. I'm going to do John Morris here because he plays the most like your typical Belmont. And objective, normally I don't care about difficulty setting when the objective is just to beat the game. But when the true ending is locked behind difficulty, behind the game's difficulty setting, you know... This time, I have to beat the game on expert mode to unlock the true ending. And there are some differences with, our, with expert mode. For stars, it takes so far more of those eagle badges to fully power up your web. On easy mode, you only need one, and suddenly you can unleash hell, all the powers of hell on your enemies. But here, I think it's like three. You need three badges on expert and two on normal. And yes, it follows the same trajectory in that front as as Castlevania Adventure, where if you take one hit, you get nerfed to oblivion. I'm just gonna try to rush through these hordes because they never stop spawning. And now we get to enter the last room. And as you can see, it's basically a remake of the first stage of the first Castlevania game. We still haven't fully powered up our whip, so this guy's going to be a little tough. I uh, skipped out on the opportunity to do so because of those eyeball things. I did not want to have to deal with them, so I decided to skip the third and final eagle badge. So yeah, you are actually rewarded by not having to deal with... If you avoid getting damage, you are... You can... are rewarded by... through... by being extremely powerful. And I finally got the upgrade. This is basically the setup... setup that we're going to be running for the rest of the game. And you must know, you know, hearts were replaced by those, by jewels. And those jewels are, act as currency for our what to use our sub weapons. And the crystal in the, uh, 
And the magic orb is extremely is the and it is an extremely powerful sub weapon. It wrecks havoc on hordes, on to on difficult enemies, and even on bosses. However, they are also expensive investment. About eight. Oh yeah, you can hit attack diagonally. You don't get full. You don't. You don't actually get full eight direction control at all times like you did Super Castlevania. But the movements in this game are very, very fluid. And, and you can still hit down or diagonally. Or an up or or an up diagonal direction when you jump. First boss. All right, got him. And, oh yeah, you get to keep your jewels. They carry over from stage to stage, and they actually keep sc score of all- And they actually keep score all at once this time around, instead of slowly counting down, like in the past. So you can keep your jewels. And they carry over from stage to stage, even on expert mode. Something worth knowing is that extra mode is not significantly harder than easy mode. That's significantly harder than easy mode. Sure, some rooms are lar there are larger hordes of enemies, but in general, they keep the same amount and they take the same amount of damage. Some exceptions here and there. Uh, this room is one of them. I want to be careful because there are these ghosts that will just hound you forever. And they take two hits to kill. And they never stop spawning. Alright, he's too far away so I'm just going to ignore him. And, oh yeah, you can hop on the stairs by holding up when jumping. I don't know, I just think this game looks much better than uh, Super Castlevania 4. I know it's a three year difference. Super Castlevania 4 came out in 91. Well, this game is 94. Also, the sprites are smaller, but honestly, I kind of like it that way. Very easy boss. It's kind of funny that that sub boss I we just beat actually explains the what actually is the reason why the water kept rising previously and why the water is going to recede in the next area. First we have to take down these sub bosses. All right, that was easy. And this section was a lot easier than I thought it would be. And I only found out about the whole expert mode thing from a practice run I did on easy mode. I also started 
I also started to realize, too, that was actually a close one back there. Uh, that I kept missing some sub bosses. And in one case, a main boss as well. And that was kind of interesting. And I used that power up so I could just take out all the candles and stuff all at once. That and I feel I don't need a whole to be super stingy with it, but you gotta see how powerful that thing is. It just decimates everything. You gotta take out the head to the statue of Atlantis. And uh Yeah, we are going to take out those guys because they'll just keep getting in the way. I wait for the holy water to dissipate. Uh, it's okay to grab it if you want. But understand that if you do. You will lose access to the orb until you grab a second copy of whatever weapon you're equipped. I kind of realized that I go was going to have to use an extra one. But don't worry, I'm, I'll be fine in terms of the orbs. Uh, you want to use them for emergencies only. Or to get past a really long and tedious waiting period. I want to get these guys charging. And now we're ready to take on the boss. Now I take out all these supports because he is incredibly tall. And I basically laid waste to the sky. Yeah, I wanted to take out support so we could damage the eye, which is his weak spot, and we utterly destroyed the sky. Very easy, boss. Provided that you uh, keep, provided that you keep track of where the falling de falling debris is going to land. Next stop, probably my favorite stage. Maybe not my favorite music track, but you know what? I like this. I really like this stage, and you won't be able to see why it is for a little while. But I can assure you, this game, this stage is pretty mind blowing to watch. Take out the birds first, and then the Minotaur. Birds will continue to hound you until you take them out, whereas the guys, the Minotaurs there, won't be as big of a pain. Gotta outrun the eyeball. Gotta take this guy out. Alright, the birds are literally just so flamey, so I decided to avoid them. Took them both out, two for one. And 
And here's technically the sub boss for the stage. This guy's just longer than normal and can shoot fire, breathe fire like that. Got him. Easy. And this is honestly a pretty cool section in its own right. But this isn't the reason why uh, the Lean Tower of Pisa, which I've actually been to, is my favorite stage in the game. Don't grab the candle. Alright, we haven't reached it yet. We are about to get there. And honestly, the music... I don't really like... I don't really care much for it, but I do like... The fact that it actually makes the sequence more tense than it has to be. You're basically climbing up the Tower of Pisa, where one wrong step can actually cost you your life. But here it is. Okay, so we have not quite seen it yet, but but keep watch. Look at that. It is so freaking cool or what? That gets cool as you keep climb as we keep ascending upward. Cause this stage actually Cause this portion actually gives you the feeling that you are spinning around. The Leaning Tower of Pisa. I mean, look at those platforms in the distance. And yes, we are supposed to climb those. Now, I have to be careful because sometimes they'll drop wep sub weapons which we don't want to grab. So, you still need to get your, keep your eyes peeled, but this is some impressive graphical fluidity. And now we take on the third stage guard, where we boss, which is the gargoyle. On top of the Lean Tower of Pisa, just spinning around endlessly. Uh, we want to go a little in the. Wow, I couldn't get a word out. Uh, I just memorized the placement where the gargoyle was gonna be for all three phases and just wailed on him. Hmm. And now for the fourth stage where we're heading to Germany. I should note that this game is set during World War One. And, uh, Elizabeth Barkley, and trying to keep watch of all the skeletons in the background and the foreground is pretty tricky. Uh, Castlevania Bloodlines is pretty much the first Castlevania game to actually acknowledge the Bram Stoker novel. I believe Elizabeth Barkley is a character from the novel. Now, it doesn't follow the novel at all, 
The novel's set in the 19th... I believe it's set in the 19th century, and this is early 20th. But, but for what it's worth... It's a, we have to go down here. I'm trying to watch for this guy. Uh, we can hear that there's a spinning mace skeleton down here, but we're not going to mess with him. Yes, and on easy difficulty, those skeletons will die in one hit. I realize I wasn't going to be able to make a safe or competent landing, so I used the sphere. So yeah, those things move really fast. Those uh, pistons. Don't worry, they won't get back up. Only the red ones and the ones that lose their heads get back up. The ones that lose their heads only get back up once. But I have to still keep watch of the Medusa heads. Something I should have done is probably, uh... Cause I could have hit that guy and, uh, gotten hurt. I'm at 99 jewels, so... All I really have to do is keep moving. I got- I kinda realized that I was going to get a little overwhelmed, so I used the power-up there. You don't need to be too stingy with the power-ups, just use some proper discretion. And I one psych- and I single-cycled, uh, Frankenstein's monster. I think the instruction manual would have called him Frankenstein, but that's the name of the scientist. they don't spawn anymore. Alright, we are heading on to the pretty much the semi-final area. And that was an example of a down shot. And I'm maxed out so I can ignore all the candles. I don't know if those gears can actually hurt you. But these can. Here's the main stage boss. Which is called the Gear Steamer. Yuppie, and that was it. 
kinda easy. it for stage four now on to stage five which is for sailies for sailies palace france and apologize if the content of this section is low res compared to the rest i don't know what happened during the recording process, but it wasn't didn't record at the same resolution as the rest of this episode. Regardless, it only really impacts the way the the uh, top pud actually looks. I don't trust myself against the sky, so. There we go. Oh, that was a free kill. And the reason why I'm not using the gems here is because we will still need to use them later. And there aren't a whole lot of opportunities that we have left to restock on jewels the rest of the game. Okay, some point we want to use these. Or power up to take out these enemies here. So we don't have to stick around for very long. That room was pretty straightforward. As you can see, that the third room definitely cleaned us out. If you must know, stage 3 and 5 are the only stages with routes that are unique to the card. Just gonna make it over these steps. This is also a fairly cool room, but not a whole lot that's going on. Just note that they are spinning very, very, very rapidly, so be warned. And that's as far as we go. Take on this armored thing. All right. From this point on, we just want to duck. Probably didn't need to do that, but it's nice that I'm back at max jewels for the rest of the bat for the rest of the game. And spoilers, we will only be using our. Uh, our sub weapon 13 more times for the rest of the run. Pretty much all these enemies take 5 hits to kill, so just keep that in mind. And another sub boss. This is how you know we're at near the end of the game. Uh, they come in threes this time on expert mode. On easy, they come in ones, and I reckon that on normal, they come in twos. And I don't care the last, the first two rounds worth, and the third one round, round's worth of projectiles go away 
Once you beat the boss, I was able to get the three cycle this time. Three cycle's very tricky. Yeah, we look at that. Smut more even more mode seven awesomeness. Do remember that this is for City's Palace. I uh, manipulated her to pop up in this corner so I could annihilate the Moth Princess in record time. That's her name. I used a power up to skip the next phase and then one whip, more whip, took care of the rest. Now we are in the final level. Castle Prosper the, Pro the Castle Prospera, England, which is actually which I believe is a fictitious location, similar to Dracula's castle in Transylvania. Oh yeah, these Medusa hit heads actually shoot explosives at you. And this room. Uh, okay, what the hell's going on? Well, as you uh, proceed, it, the room gets increasingly distorted. The key is to watch your feet. Because the feet tells you where you are, not your body. And here are the final sets of enemies left in this dungeon. Now I, now I did grab the boomerang, but I did that in case I might need it for the Medusa heads. Because I never really ran into a problem with them. Because I wasn't abusing the hell out of the, uh, my sub weapon. And by the way, these enemies that you're seeing in this room are literally the, f are all copies of the first stage boss. Except now you can kill them in one hit. So yeah, I got the blue orb again. Alright, we got boss fight coming up. And it's uh, the Golem rematch. This time I want to hold on to my uh, blue orbs for the Dracula fight. And even though I didn't use my sub weapon at all to, to uh, shorten the length of time it took to beat him, we still beat him fairly quickly, all things considered. Yep, and on easy mode you get two. Two of those three death cards are actually food cards. To help regenerate health, normal only one of them is, and 
On an expert mode, all three cards are death cards. For this minigame, you need to hit all six of his cards, and three of them are sub-bosses. And he was even easier this time than he was last time, in spite the change in patterns. And same strategy as last time, except it takes fewer whips to take him down. Two whips to end phase one as opposed to three, and same will apply in phase two, phases two and three. Well, I'll take two hits instead of three. And now we get to fight death himself. And this is the start of the boss gauntlet, the final boss gauntlet. Now on the oh, now on easy mode there are only 8 bosses you have to fight during this final stretch of the game. But in uh, but on expert mode there are 9. Uh you get the Medusa head but not Elizabeth Barkley. Well not Medusa head just Medusa. I'm a little close, so I have to back away a bit. But now we get a fight. Pro probably should have been the true final boss, all things considered. Since this is the what the story was building up to. Defeat Elizabeth Barkley to prevent the resurrection of Dracula. You can only hit her when she's in this form, however only the last hit with the four floating orbs actually matters. Alright, so now she's halfway done. We're close to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Yeah, she's halfway done. And what happens if you don't hit, hit her on time for the final one? Well, the final ore will then become... Well, whatever it's supposed to be. The light orbs would spawn the uh, some fodder enemies. The fire orbs would spawn little flames. And I don't remember what the other orbs would spawn. I don't think I ever saw the sword in action. And we don't actually see what happens because we defeated her. Holy crap, we blew up a super hot lady. Well, that's what they call Femme Fatale. Or Flame Fatale. <laughs> and we got a Super Castlevania 4 remix. A little better than the remix tracks from Castlevania's 1 through 3 in Super Castlevania 4, but it's just the only track in the game I can find okay. But here's the final boss, Dracula. And even without the orbs, this is fight's pretty trivial, all things considered. 
You want to keep an, at least enough of a distance so he, so that you're not within range of his arm. So he could completely do away with his projectiles. While dealing maximum damage to him. Something you notice is that, for whatever reason, all the bosses on expert mode seems to have an, an will always have one health remaining. Even when they should have been dead by that point. And I used the last power up to instantly win the fight. And those little tiny orbs move really, really fast, so be careful. And I'm just gonna trivialize this fight by just spamming the help the crap out of the orbs. Uh the game will send you straight to the title screen this time around. Unlike in most other Castlevania games that we covered here on Castlevania Month, you go straight to the title screen. Uh the mo most of the other game, specifically the number titles, as well as well as the Game Boy titles, will have, will uh, send you to, will have you replay the game but on a higher difficulty setting. Which I do not count towards perfection. And I'm gonna get rid of my boomerangs here. Not that I need to. Um. But, this and Sonic's Quest are the only games I cover that sends you straight to the title screen when you beat the game. A Kumacho special Dr Boku Dracula Kun simply hangs in on the, uh... Simply hovers around the title. And, uh, begin easy mode ends right here. Easy mode ending ends right here. And on normal mode, the resurrection of Dracula has been averted. And that's all that there is in normal mode. This is the expert mode ending. However, the blood of the vampire hunter still courses through his veins. It just hovers at the, the end screen at the end in a Kumajo special. So, there it is. That's it for Castlevania Bloodlines. Probably the my favorite of the games I covered for Castlevania Month, so it was definitely quite the treat to play this game. Um Armor Battler, yeah, we fought him at the end of stage one, and they're in the fourth room in uh, in stage six. And here's the golem fight. And, uh, yeah, I think this game pretty much did just about everything I can think of right. Even this, even probably one of the worst traits of Castlevania Adventure did right, because at least you have access to sub-weapons. You have options in case you actually get hurt. And there's Gargoyle. And yeah, I actually hope you guys enjoyed the Castlevania month. This was, by all accounts, the first time I ever played through a Castlevania game, much less beaten any of them. And going through all eight of these games, putting my skills to use, honing my skills, and just going through, tearing through these games. Princess of Moss. I think it's supposed to be the Moth Princess, but translation issues, you know. And there's death. We never actually got to see him perform that attack in Bloodlines, but we did Super Castlevania 4. And there's Elizabeth Barkley turning into, into the Medusa. Kind of funny that Elizabeth Barkley herself never gets a name drop. But, you know, I hope you like what you see here. 
And leave a like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Here's Dracula. And give a shout out if you want to see more Castlevania months in the near future. More perfect playthroughs of this great series. I really hope so. But with all that out of the way, I think it's time to wrap this up. This is Mike Gordon signing out.